All right, great. Um, so I couldn't have asked for a better lead-in to this talk uh, between the last two, so thank you both for the uh, excellent descriptions of what this is all about. Um, I'm uh, James, I'm from Sage Bio Networks, and I'm gonna talk about these dream challenges that we've been hosting to uh, more critically assess some of these technologies around workflows, uh, in particular, uh, the tools and workflows um, built on languages and standards like CWL and Whittle. Um, I thought I'd start with a, a figure that I uh, grabbed from a paper that was published in 2015. Um, and I know that the data biosphere is kind of the more recent, sexy uh, version of this, but I, I like the original. Um, I think given this audience, we're all in agreement on the value and the benefits of interoperability, reproducibility, um, findability, and all of the best practices of, of fair um, science. With this, um, the development of standards like common workflow languages and um, platforms and engines for running these and APIs to let everything talk together uh, enables us to start breaking down some of the silos in genomic and clinical uh, research, which is great. Um, however, one of the questions that obviously follows is, do these things work? Um, are we actually getting the reproducibility and the portability and the reusability that are promised by these uh, solutions? Uh, so this is where <laughs> we came up with the idea for hosting a series of infrastructure challenges. Um, I like to refer to this uh, not as a word cloud, but as a cloud cloud. Um, as you can see, there are a wide spectrum of different um, tools and softwares and platforms uh, that are really designed to make all this um, happy interoperability uh, thing. Uh, everywhere from containers and package managers to workflow engines and um, fully hosted systems. Um, and of course, there's the uh, little cloud services as well. Um, so trying to make sense of these things and provide a, a means to evaluate them and judge them, um, the idea was to turn to dream challenges. Uh, I apologize for the large blobs of text, but um, I'll skip and not actually read them. Uh, in short, uh, dream challenges are um, a community competition similar to the Kaggle uh, machine learning uh, model where um, historically uh, we provide a common input data set, we have a gold standard or a known truth, and participants submit uh, models and predictions trying to come up with the best diagnostic approach, prognostic approach, um, and so on. Um, we thought that we could use a similar framework but turn it on its head, and rather than providing data, we would actually provide workflows. And by providing these workflows, we could allow participants to then run them on their own time and uh, tell us, or we could help them figure out if they are, in fact, reproducible. Um, the other advantages of, or advantage of Dream is this idea of bringing together a community around a problem, um, and I think that was uh, certainly one of the, the great outcomes of this. Um, so how did we actually do this? Uh, it required some uh, innovation, given that it was quite different from uh, any other Dream challenges that have been run before. Um, and I, I guess like I summarized a moment ago, it really was about getting real workflows from the community. So from ENCODE and GDC and BC Bio and um, all these groups at the top. Um, workflows that they're actually using in their production environments. Uh, contributing these to a central workspace in Synapse um, and providing them to participants in terms of the full spectrum of inputs you would need. So from descriptor files, parameter files, input and reference files, and also um, this other concept, which I'll come back to in a moment, of uh, a checker for, for your workflow outputs. From here, the participants could then access all the materials, um, pull it into the environment they wanted, whether it's local, on different cloud platforms, run the workflow, and submit the results. Um, at the end, uh, we ran this checker tool, which was designed by the workflow authors themselves to evaluate the conformance of the outputs, um, such that we could then say, okay, did the workflow get the results that were expected or not? And then 
on top of all of that, we required everyone to document their methods, and um, we validated that as well. So I'll skip through this pretty quickly because I'm running out of time, and uh, hopefully you can come learn more from the poster. But in short, we were able to see a lot of reproducibility of workflows across a wide variety of platforms. So this was a really encouraging first step that we, we plan to continue with further dream challenges as well as more automated versions of some of these uh, frameworks for testing workflows. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll wrap it up and invite everyone to come uh, talk to me at the poster about some of the lessons and uh, other plans that we have for these things. And if you're interested, we're also in the process of, of writing a lot of these findings uh, up in a paper. And we're having a group writing session this evening as a bird's a, fe a feather uh, to hopefully make some more progress. So thank you. <laughs>